Hey, Richard Pryor took the head off a lot of things. And he made people see, he made white people as well as black people and brown people start looking at the world differently and race relations differently. I mean, they accidentally shoot more niggas out here than any place in the world. Every time you pick up a paper, nigga accidentally shot in the ass. <laughs> How do you accidentally shoot a nigga six times in the chest? <laughs> uh, well, my gun fell and just went crazy. <laughs> they separated him from the rest of the people because uh, Bill Cosby wasn't using it. And the word connected him with his people in America. Uh, he made a real connection. To me, it was boy, it was just part of the toolbox, you know. For, uh, in his case, perfect tool, uh, and, and and using it like a sledgehammer, not like a jeweler's screwdriver, you know. And I remember tricks used to come through our neighborhood. That's where I first met white people. They come down through our neighborhood to help the economy. <laughs> what? Hello, little boys. Your mother home? I like a blowjob. <laughs> But I wonder what would happen if niggas go through white neighborhoods doing that. <laughs> hey man, is your mama home? <laughs> Tell the bitch we want to fuck. Yeah. I, I'll see. <laughs> so when Richard Pryor came on and made those amazing albums, we all thought it was funny. Not so much because of the use of the term, but for the broader context of the humor. It's sort of like uh, black humor without apology. <laughs> Niggas are the best of people that were slaves, you know what I mean? And that's how they got to be niggas. Because they stole the cream of the crop from Africa and brought them over here. And God, as they say, works in mysterious ways. So he made everybody a nigger because we was arguing over in Africa about the Watusi and the Buhala, the Wotsuhumo, and you know, the Zamunga, you know. We talked about in different languages. So he brought us all over here, the best, the kings, the queens, and the princesses, and the princes, you know. You know what I mean? Shit, and put us all together and call one tribe, niggas. <laughs> it says something about uh, the African American experience. It defines us in, in new creative ways. And for us, it was something that I think many of us felt was very liberating about it. My daddy's sucking the bowls here. <laughs> oh, goddamn. Nigga, you better get that meat out of there, motherfucker. Look at, look at, there's some meat in there, nigga. Shit. <laughs> look, look down in there, boy. Look at that. Mother. Shit. You don't throw shit away, nigga. Shit. You better eat with your white friends. For the older generation of blacks, people who had been called nigga on a regular, daily basis, to hear anyone use the word, even Richard Pryor, uh, for all of his creative genius, uh, was uh, an offense, an insult, something that was unforgivable. Lots of black people were offended by what he did, by his use of, of you know, winos and junkies and these characters. Can you get help or some of this, nigga? Try some of that. What you trembling? No, you can't have none of this now. You're going to tremble, nigga. What's wrong with you? I'm sick, mother. And then also the fact that he used the N-word so liberally in depicting these people. Oh, shit, man. The motherfucking bubble. The nigga told me I got to have some money and get some dope. And the thing about Pryor was that Pryor was unlike Red Fox, who was in Chitlin Circuit spots, unlike the Last Poets, who was sort of in black bohemian circles. Pryor played white clubs. He played integrated audiences. Because ugly white women used to say they got raped by niggas. <laughs> and a nigga raped me. Yeah, and nigga, guys be going, hey, you sure? <laughs> yeah, they go round up some niggas, you know, like, oh, you were down last week, you know what to do, don't you? Well, come on down again, will you? We gotta have a lineup. <laughs> There's always been an element in the white community of enjoying black people demeaning themselves and degrading themselves. From Uncle Tom's to Shuffling Tom's to, to be Amos and Andy to, to being fools. And so I don't know that we gain any respect from the white community. In fact, probably the opposite. Because those images are not positive of ones you would, you would gravitate to. Saturday night, though, was, uh, they always call it nigger night because white folks go out about 8 and leave and go home at 10 and leave it to the niggers because it gets thick. They can't handle it. You know what I mean? Too many niggas, they, when they find out niggas could talk other than do a ho they got scared to death. You know, like one day somebody said, nigga, talk. Well, motherfucker, I've been wanting to tell you something. I beg your pardon. <laughs> and he's probably the first black artist to then also challenge white listeners and make them think about the word nigga. Right, and he'd go out, get clean, be driving with his old lady, going out to a club, and police pull over. Get out of the car! That was a robbery! A nigga looks just like you! All right, put your hands up, take your pants down, spread your cheeks. Now, what nigga feel like having fun after that? 
When he used that word, it connected us all as human beings. It didn't separate us. That was the brilliance of it. You know, where the word is usually used to divide, somehow he used it to connect people. And I don't know how he did that, but he sure did. Oh, ignorant. Hey man, who you calling nigga, huh? I slapped a taste out your mouth. You don't even know my name. I'll whoop your ass. Beat the white off your ass. And yet, isn't it funny that Richard came towards the end to saying he's never going to use it again? I went home to the motherland, and everybody should go home to Africa. I was leaving, and I was sitting in the hotel, and a voice said to me, he said, look around, what do you see? And I said, I see all colors of people doing everything, you know? And the voice said, do you see any niggas? And I said, no. And said, you know why? Because there aren't any. Ben Pryor has looked at the word in another way, and he sees it as an ugly word. So he came into that, you know, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that the word was thrust upon him, and he said, I gotta, I gotta switch. I, I can't feel the same about it. And it made me say, oh my God, I've been wrong. I've been wrong. I got to regroup my shit. I mean, I said, I ain't gonna never call another black man a nigga. You had the genie out of the bottle situation, though, didn't you? Because once he repudiated it, it didn't stop anything. There's a whole generation who, for his freedom, you know, they took his their freedom. And they took it to a place that I think he couldn't even have imagined. I am the nigger. Singer of songs. Dancer. Softer than fluff of cotton. Harder than dark earth. Roads beaten in the sun by the bare feet of slaves. Foam of teeth. Breaking crash of laughter. Red love of the blood of woman. White love of the tumbling pickaninnies. Lazy love of the banjo thrum. Sweated and driven for the harvest wage. Loud laughter with hands like hams. Fists toughened on the handles. Smiling the slumber dreams of old jungles. Crazy as the sun and dew and dripping, heaving life of the jungle. Brooding and muttering with memories of shackles. I am the nigger. Look at me. I am the nigger. Nigger by Carl Sandburg from Chicago Poems, 1916.